So here's a look at the outside of the house. <clears throat> Take a walk around and have a look. Say hi to Rufus there. Hey Rufus. That's the doors to the loft. Those doors and that little mini balcony and corbels are all made out of cypress, which is an excellent exterior wood. <clears throat> Have a look at our little mini shed here on the back, sitting on the tongue of the trailer. This trailer was made in Sweetwater, Tennessee. It was designed by a tiny house builder, specifically for a tiny house. The trailer is rated to 14,000 pounds, and the house itself, my best guess, is between 11 and 12,000. And I think I think that's probably pretty accurate. It's a Renai on-demand water heater, brand new, hooked up. To run on propane at the moment as is the stove and the range. <clears throat> the bottom of the shed is screened to keep insects out. Now I have to pardon the dust that's uh, caught between two pieces of glass on the lens and I can't get it out. Look at the fuse box there. That's where the electricity comes into the tiny house and right now we're just hooked up with an extension cord to the house and it's fine to run everything in it at the moment. This is where the plumbing comes out of the toilet. It's plumbed for a conventional toilet. We didn't put one in because uh, a lot of people We'll choose to have a composting. Here's some other kind of toilet. It has the metal sheathing underneath, which well protected. Very well designed, well built trailer. side. Here's the, we put a hose bib on and that's where the water comes in to the tiny house and where the propane come in. And there is where all the waste uh, comes uh, exits the building. It doesn't have a storage tank that would be on the owner to, to figure out how they want to deal with uh, wastewater. And then here we have the vent uh, from the shower where it exits the building and the vent over the range where it comes out. These are uh, Jeldwin double hung sash windows, very nice windows, insulated of course. the front. So those uh, are cedar, hand cut cedar shakes on the gable there. And then the rest, the siding itself and the trim on the outside is a pine. We had originally planned to paint, paint the tiny house, kind of a three color Victorian sort of thing. Um, but then when we got it 
we we got it here and we put a product called eco on the pond it's uh it reacts with the tannins in the wood and um and kind of ages it and uh and helps to preserve it a little too and we just like the color so much it just looked so nice that we left it that way and so every year or so it, it needs a coat of cabot uh, oil on it which is not uh not a very time consuming thing to do because it's just such a small amount of surface area it's a tiny tiny house and uh probably wouldn't probably wouldn't take more than a few hours once every year or two so we did we did everything on this house uh we it's all handmade parts we designed it built it here this door is um, a mortise and tenon wormy maple door i made this stained glass window um, it's been turned into an insulative unit at a glass place in Asheville. porch light there so that's the outside so here we are at the outside of the tiny house the dogwood tiny house my wife and I designed and built this entire thing from the trailer up it took us about a year maybe a little more than that counting the whole design process and everything <clears throat> It's the, out, the outside shed sitting on the tongue of the trailer. Have a look inside there. The fuse box. The bottom is screened to keep bugs and critters out. The Renai on-demand water heater. It and the range and stove are set up for propane right now. Um, although both could uh, can be converted to natural gas. Uh, here is where the hose bib comes out <clears throat> the water goes into the tiny house here propane comes in there there's where the the plumbing waste exits the building on the the two sinks and the toilet uh, all and the oh and the washing machine they all drain to that point right there uh, it doesn't have a, any storage tank or anything like that, so that would be on the person who buys it <coughs> to uh, just to figure out how to deal with the wastewater. Have a look at the where the electricity comes in right down here. Right now we just have it plugged up to the house, which is sufficient to run the lights um, and the microwave inside for the moment. But of course you'd need a larger, a larger power source <clears throat> once you have a refrigerator and such. Take a look at the other side. There's where the vent comes out of the shower and the vent over the microwave comes out right there. Kitchen window. These are Jeldwin uh, double hung sash windows, very nice insulated windows. front 
Those uh, scalloped shingles are cedar. I cut those by hand. The siding and the trim on the exterior are pine. And originally, when we decided on the pine, we had planned on painting the tiny house, like a three-color three Victorian type of thing. But uh, when we got the siding home and we, we put a, a, a product called Eco on it to see what it looked like, it, it, inter, it reacts with the tannins and kind of ages the wood, uh, gives it that, that patina. And we liked it so much that we just left it like that. And so what's going to need to happen is that the house will be recoated with Cabot oil every year or so. And it probably, it probably wouldn't take four hours to do the entire house because it's, it's just such a small amount of surface area. So not a real big deal, but it will require some maintenance or, or could be repainted, could be painted. So we, uh, my wife and I, we built everything on this house. This door is uh, made right here in my shop. It's wormy maple, mortise and tenon. The uh, stained glass window has been turned into a, an insulative unit at a glass place in Asheville. It's actually the stained glass is sandwiched between two pieces of glass uh, so that uh, gets rid of any condensation problems and also makes it you know, better insulation. Oh, poor light. So that's the front of the house. Alright, we're going to go inside and have a look. Guess we'll start here with the what might be the dining nook or uh, could be an office space if you're a writer or somebody who works at home on a computer. That light's on a dimmer. These fixtures in here, we um, we custom made those with parts to fit the space. Have your storage loft. Those beams um, are kiln-dried 4x4s, and they're tied to the framing. And it really uh, strengthens the house. I've been in here when there was a 30 mile an hour wind, and the thing hardly moved. It's uh, rock solid. These are the cabinets that I built. I built cabinets and furniture for 30 years on and off. A little bookcase built in over the wheel well. <coughs> Engineered hardwood flooring. Pine beadboard and pine lap interior siding. Here's the light switches when you come in the door. The stair unit. I'd need two hands but those both of those treads um, come up and have storage underneath that this one taller one would make a really nice laundry hamper. Over here we have an adjustable shelf and I put in a roll out garbage can.
can. And then this space here is designed for a 24 inch wide full height refrigerator. On the stairs and it's got the outlet there. But what a person could do if they wanted is uh, put it, a uh, dorm style fridge will fit in this unit. Uh, you'd of course have to take the shelf out in the garbage can, but that could that could hold a dorm style uh, refrigerator. <clears throat> and then this space combined with this closet space next to it would become a, a sizable uh, space you could do a lot of different things with if you wanted a bureau, a bureau dresser, uh, any a lot more storage of whatever kind. That's the louver door to the bathroom. Here we have the oh, focus. That's where the stackable uh, washer and dryer would fit, and it has the hookups there. Really nice stainless steel Frigidaire microwave. Stainless steel range and oven. These are brand spanking new. Corbels, Heather, Heather made those out in our backyard with the forge and anvil as she did on these. The beautiful handrails leading up to the loft. That's walnut, the dark wood, and then more of the wormy maple for the treads. Walnut handrail there. If I got the fact that there's outlets space throughout. <clears throat> this also is walnut, this little mini counter, wormy maple, another custom lighting unit, it's, it can swivel and change the angle. Uh, my nephew made that cutting more than <laughs> leftover wormy maple. The cabinets have all full extension ball bearing hardware. Good stuff. And this stainless steel tip out. Adjustable shelves in the cabinets. Down here too. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, there's that one. Cabinet up above there. The awning style windows, they open, of course. Nice little ceiling fan. Let's have a better look at the loft space there. Those are the screens for all the windows. Just leaving those off because we don't want to get damaged. Plus, 
Plenty of room for a queen sized mattress. And put in a, a drawer there and a little, little shelf unit. Plenty of outlets again. Smoke alarm. Lots of light, lots of natural light and lots of uh, lighting. There's a beautiful window. All right. Then we'll have a look at the bathroom. Okay, we're going to have a look at the bathroom. Heather made some little hooks to match the rest of the metalwork in the house. Another one there. That's a hand made copper sink bowl that we we didn't make that of course we ordered that it came from egypt <clears throat> heather made these uh, stained glass windows that are in the bathroom and they also have been sandwiched between two pieces of glass it makes them uh, better insulated and uh, and cuts down on any condensation problems you might have this is a neat little unit here um, the mirror all in front of the window and then got some storage area there and that shelf up top there is of a size you can fit your Toilet paper. <laughs> Tiled shower floor. I like the way the shower turned out. Yeah. So that's the Dogwood Tiny House, inside and out.